Okay, let's jump into how to do it right. And maybe we can talk about some of the specifics about how, how to reach out to a coach, what to, uh, what to share, what to send, how long a video. Let's talk about those things. Yeah, so I think this would be helpful for players, coaches, and parents on, on how to send a good one. Because first of all, you have to understand the volume of emails we get. I coach at a division two college and we get hundreds and hundreds of emails every single week. And I'm talking, you know, an occasional week, sometime over a thousand emails we will get in one week. And these come from, you know, recruiting services. They come from high school coaches, travel coaches, the player themselves, transfers, prep schools, JUCOs, like you're just getting tons of emails. And so if you put yourself in the spot of a coach, you know, how do I actually go through all this? And we have a system with my staff on how we, you know, kind of divvy those out. But I can also tell you, there's a large percentage that will get deleted right away. There is a percentage that will stop at my desk because something caught my eye. And there's a percentage that will get filtered out to my assistants to hopefully go through when time permits, but they have a job and we've got phone calls to make, we've got practices to run, you get, you know, and so, you know, you're getting hundreds of emails, not everyone gets seen, not everyone gets through. And so, you know, there's, I could go on for a long time about this, but I'm gonna try and hit the highlights of some things that I think are really, really important. Um, So the first thing I would say is your tagline. I mean, it's just like any other email. if I see a tagline that says, recruit me, that's not very interesting. If I see a tagline that says, I want a scholarship, yeah, not very interesting, not a really good way to start it. But if I see something that says six foot one point guard, 4.0 GPA, 42% from the three point line. Hmm, interesting enough, right? I'm not even saying that's the winner, but yeah. interesting enough, 4.0 GPA, that tells me right off the bat, they won't even cost me a full scholarship because many people understanding this, like it's much like a salary cap to at a lot of schools. So for instance, if I see a kid that's in the state of Georgia with a 4.0, I know right off the rip, my school is going to give them X number of dollars. The Hope Scholarship is going to give them X number of dollars. And before I even open the email, if this kid's any good, he's only costing me half a scholarship. You know, and, and and so that that means something to me. And um, you know, and if your GPA is not too high, you probably don't want to put it in there. Two point two GPA. You might want to you want want to bury that one a little bit. You might want. You, but the highlights, something that's going to catch their attention of, of what may stand out about your son or your daughter, I think is really important. So that tagline uh, needs to be good. Um, and then you know, the second thing is this. If it is sent to 484 different people, then I don't, I think it's just if you're fishing. And so I'm definitely, I might even delete it. I might pass it on, but when it's to the masses, it's not a great chance that I'm going to get, read it. If the tagline was good and it said, Hey, coach Rosine, I'm like, wow, they took enough time to, to find my name, right? Like I'm probably give it a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. If there was any kind of connection, you know, my son or daughter or, or, or my friend went to Emmanuel or I heard about Emmanuel from so and so or I do, I'd be like, OK, well, this is somebody that I, I probably need to contact back. It might not be immediate, but I probably need to contact them back because they identified a connection between us, something mm-hmm. that, that may matter. It wasn't just in bulk and, and it wasn't just all about them. They made some kind of connection. Um, next thing, and I'm just rattling off a bunch of bullet points here, Mano, so hopefully co- people are yeah. getting these notes here. But um, the next thing is, if I look at this email and it looks like a novel, I'm thinking, I don't have time to do this. You know, I usually allot twice a day, 22 minutes to look through my recruiting emails. And so that might even get me through a third of them, of the ones I get on that day. And so it, it's got to be good. And I'm not going to have time to read a novel because that's going to take my entire 22 minutes. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking for bullet points and highlights. I just want to know. And honestly, even if you give me the bullet points and there's a click to the video, I'm probably going to go skip the bullet points and go to the video. And if I like the video, I'll go back and read the bullet points. So I want to easily access, access your video. Now I'm going to move on to the video. You don't want to bury the lead. Right off the rip, I'm not going to watch a 10-minute video. If the first minute doesn't catch my attention, first 30, 45 seconds, I'm probably forwarding it on to one of my assistants 
or moving on. So in the first couple of highlights, you know, yes, and passing is really important. And I'd like to see that in the fifth minute that your player can make some reads. But I don't want to see in the first minute. I want to see what they can they can do with the ball. And then we will dig deeper. you got to give me a re- reason to dig deeper. I might dig deeper and find out later, well, they actually don't play that hard on defense. That highlight film was just them scoring. I, I'm going to dig deeper. I'm going to ask for games. I'm going to ask for practices, you know, or different things that I might want to see as a coach. But you you don't want to lose me early. You don't want to lose any coach early, you know. And, and so um, – you want to grab that attention. You want to put all that stuff that they're beginning. So, you know, Mono, at a high level, like there's some things I think that are just really important bullet points um, to try and get your email read. Even that doesn't guarantee your email gets read, but those are some things that'll make it more likely to get read. That's really helpful. Uh, you, you said don't lose them early. How long should that video be? So if, uh, if a parent or a coach is planning on putting together a video to send to, uh, to a college coach, yeah. You know, honestly, if three minutes, if I've watched three minutes and it's enough to get my attention, I'm not going to offer you a scholarship on a 10 minute video. Like I'm going to, I'm going to dig deeper. I'm going to get to know you. I'm going to watch the video. So, you know, I mean, three minutes is good for me. If you went five or six, fine. Um, I don't know if I've ever watched a 10 minute video because if in the first two minutes they weren't good enough, I didn't watch the last eight minutes. And if the first two to three minutes, they were good enough, we were picking up the phone or we were having <laughs> calling, you know? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that fifth to six minutes, I don't know what happens to it, but I might go back and watch it later, find out the player has interest. I'll rewatch the video a couple of times, but you know, I think three to five minutes is plenty of time for that video to be. All right. You gave lots of nuggets. I, I wrote them down. I'm going to recap them in just a, a minute or two here, but there's something that you want, you touched on when you talked about personalizing the email that I just want to speak to and want to just help brainstorm with you how a parent or a coach or a player can increase their likelihood. This is, it reminds me of, you know, one of my sons is trying to get a, a, a summer job right now. And it's often who you know, and you mentioned in the email, you know, if you can cite that, uh, you know, so-and-so suggested you reach out. So let's talk about that because from my experience, you know, you can go play in 100 AU tournaments and not get noticed. But if you've got somebody who can put in a good word for you, and I know that because I've called coaches on behalf of lots of PGC grads or kids that I coach, and they're going to pick up the phone if I call them because I'm in a relationship with them. And if I say, I got a kid and he's the hardest worker I've coached, the hardest working kid I've coached in 10 years, and he can he's got a motor, he can go, or he's a phenomenal shooter and he's, he's going to be a really good next level player. You want to see this kid. I mean, that's going to go way further than showing up at five AU tournaments. So let's just uh, spitball this and brainstorm here. How can a, a typical parent or player increase their odds of knowing somebody who might be able to help open a door? Yeah. That's a good question. I, one of the things I was add to that is, I mean, think six degrees, you know, like even if you make a, a distant connection to something for me, you know, like, um, man, I had the chance to watch a manual play two years ago on, on, a, on, a, on a highlight film, or I got to, it's, it's, it's distant, right? Like we don't actually know each other. Like that's probably not the strongest one, but even that kind of connection would make me think, well, they know something about us. Now, my brother attended a manual. That's a whole nother. That's even a, a, a bigger connection. Or, you know, if Mono calls me and say, hey, I've watched this kid play down the street. Well, that's even a bigger connection. So I think there's different levels to it. I think you want to make some kind of connection you can, but you're right. I mean, increasing your opportunity to make those connections, I think is, is a great idea. Yeah. I, I just thought of uh, something PGC founder Dick DeVenzio mentions in one of his books. He talks about the value of impressing a referee or impressing another team's coach and treating them well. You know, we always think, ah, oh, my coach isn't doing anything for me. You know, my high school coach, I asked him if he could help me get, uh, get recruited. And he's like, yeah, I'll make some calls. And he never made some calls. And I, I, I was, I was a bit frustrated that he didn't take, do anything on, on my behalf at the time, but how you show up with referees, referees, a lot of times are former players. Or they have friends who are coaches and they know people. Other coaches in your conference, even if your coach doesn't know somebody, 
chances are another coach in your conference does and treating them well, you know, shaking hands with good eye contact after the game or introducing yourself before the game or thanking a referee before and after a game, those things at minimum will never hurt. And at maximum, could help uh, open a door for you. What are your thoughts on that, TJ? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, to be honest with you, the way that I, I went to my first college scholarship and the team got in trouble, I told you about. And so then it was late. And it was the team that we beat in the region championships coach who had a player at that school that told the coach about me. Mm-hmm. And that's how they picked me up late, you know? And so like th- that, like those things go. And to be honest with you, I would probably be more impressed, not if your high school coach called me, but another high school in your region called me. And so like high school coaches that are on here, if you ever had a, uh, another coach that's in your region that you really trust that you're friends with, and you were to have them send me an email about a player, or you send an email about one of their players, like those kind of connections go a long way. And little things like that, Mono, like people don't recognize they get noticed. I read a a great book about it one time from a sports agent that said the majority of jobs and he had statistics on it. The majority of jobs are actually landed uh, by somebody in your closest six people. Hmm. And so like a lot of even college jobs were not landed. The college coaching jobs were not even landed by, you know, somebody that they worked for somebody, whatever it was their brother that knew somebody there. It was there somebody that knew somebody, whatever. So yeah, yeah. And why not, just open up the floodgates by building those types of connections with that type of eye contact, shake a hand, get to know people, love it. Yep. And and that would go for a high school coach as well. Then if a high school coach on tonight's call feels like, well, I don't really know many college coaches. I'd love to be able to put a phone call in the way, the way you guys can. And, and, you know, a division one coach is going to pick up the call, but if you're a high school coach or an AU coach on tonight's call, you could ask, as you said, TJ, another coach in your conference. Hey, I'm just wondering who you know, because I think Susie can can play at the next level, but I don't really know who to call. So, you know, tap into the coaches that you know, because within two or three degrees of separation, somebody knows somebody. Yeah, for sure. I'll just add one more. You never know who might be in the stands. I was playing pickup ball in the summer in high school. And I didn't know there was, there was a, a guy in a wheelchair watching, had no idea that he was a high school coach in Detroit. And he saw how hard I played in a pickup game in the summer and said, do you want to come over to Detroit and start playing with a lot of top players? And he brought me over and I started going to this Coleman Young Community Center named after the mayor of Detroit. And he brought me in there every weekend to train TJ. It didn't get me a college scholarship, but it made me a whole lot better and prepared me to to get noticed. But I had no idea. It was summer and it was it was a, a pretty empty gym. So my encouragement to players is you never know who you might be playing in front of and who you might be able to impress that might be able to pick up the phone or, or do something good to help your cause. Yeah. And I could go on and on about those stories. I have a, a former player that's an assistant at the University of Buffalo right now at a, at a Division One school. And he was on vacation in Hilton Head from Buffalo when he was in the parking lot doing ball handling at one o'clock in hundred degree weather, my dad was on a, my dad walked outside the front door and saw him and said, any kid that's out here in hundred degree weather doing ball handling, I want to meet. He met him, ended up getting a scholarship to play for him. Just a, that type of coincidence. And I've got endless number of stories like that. So you never know. So, so you create opportunities by how you show up every day players. So while it might seem daunting, to get, uh, how am I gonna get a, a scholarship? How am I gonna create opportunities? I play in a small town, I don't, I don't get exposure, I don't have a coach who can get me somewhere. How you show up every day matters. It doesn't guarantee you an opportunity, but it certainly increases your chances.